Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to learn about self-service password reset or SSPR configuration. To do that, as a first step, as a pre-requirement, we need to verify the licensing. If you remember, the licensing must be at least the P1 or P2 or Office 365 or the Microsoft 365 Business Standard or Premium. So I'm just going back to my licensing by checking on for that Azure Active Directory and if you see here the current license is I have Azure AD Premium P2 if you don't have a license just go to the licenses and give it a try if you're trying to test this in your lab uh, go to the licensing and get a free trial and then choose the Azure uh, Premium P2 license or even you can choose this uh, feature once you have uh, completed if you go with this this is a 30 days evolution if you go with this it's going to be a 90 days so you can choose any of this and i have chosen here as your ad premium uh, p2 license so i have the p2 license now assigned for my i mean i have the 100 licenses are available so it's my time to uh, assign these licenses to any of the users as you see i can have here uh, available is 100 I haven't assigned for any user as a first step I'll just go back to my users so I have a user called Chris at elearn in my lab dot com that's a learn in my lab dot com so I'm just going to click on Chris and assign a license so this is not a right way of assigning the license so what is the right way of assigning license would be you create a group and assign a group of licenses to that specific group Let's say if I want to just for assign for the users, I would be clicking on assign and then I can choose here by taking this, whatever the features I want to assign. For example, I just want to limit this user with the P1. I can do that or I can enable P2. So I'm just selecting all of them because I'm going to uh, configure even as your multi-factor authentication also for the specific user. So I have selected the specific license. So make sure that, you know, you have to wait maybe a five to 10 minutes uh, or more time sometimes. Uh, to actually reassign and reinforce this licensing information for your end users so it's not an immediate basis so I'll just close this so I'll just reprocess or maybe a refresh I should be able to see here in a minute or so about my user license I can see here my license is active and and if I just go back to my Azure Active Directory licensing I should be able to see here uh, only the uh, 99 are free out of my existing licenses of 100 and this is also if you see here it's not it replicated because we have just done so I'll just have to refresh and see and I can see that it's one license is assigned so that is definitely for Chris if I just go and pull up it's for Chris so let's jump into the demonstration uh, as a first step I need to Enable for this user the multi-factor authentication definitely for doing that. Once you click on the password reset from here, uh, you should be able to see this specific window uh, within this blade. Either you need to you know configure for the self-service password to be enabled for all users. If at all you have all the license for all the users, at least the P1 license, right? Or this specific licensing model like uh, 365 business premium or business standard based on your scenario uh, but in my case if I want to know specifically assign for a specific set of users group then just click on here uh, the selected and choose your active directory group uh, from your Azure Active Directory so in my case if you see here I have a group called uh, Paddy Lab SSPR enabled so if I just select this this specific group so whoever part of this AD group they can do the self-service password resets or so let's say if you are in a planning design state uh, if instead of you you assign for entire tenant this specific demo or the specific testing to be done you always limit with this group model so I would you know, uh, recommend that so I have configured for only group wise and the next step would be the authentication method so remember that you know we talked about either one authentication method you want to configure or two so you have to validate end users with more than one method of uh, authentication for the multi-factor so when I say multi-factor not, not just for the password also for the two methods of authentication let's say I want a mobile notification should be approved as well as the 
a code which uh, gets for the end user as the email so these two but you can also give the end users three options all of that at least the users have to be verified with two of the required methods so you may be you know, giving three options but they can choose any of these two at least or maybe security questions on their own and again you can provide the security questions what you want to you know, configure here so in our case the simple uh, and easiest method or most commonly used would be the mobile app notification and the mobile app also email and mobile phone which is SMS code based so in my case I'm just choosing all these four options and out of that at least the number of uh, authentications are two to be validated by them so I'll just click on save now the policy has been configured uh, and I can uh, show you one more quick uh, important information that by default these multi-factor authentication is already configured for all of your global admins and uh, coming back to the on-premises specification like you may have to click on on on-premises integration let's say you have Azure AD configured then you can simply enable this write back option and allow users to unlock also if you want to you know, configure these two check two s buttons then your uh, if then your users coming from on premises can change the password um, if you configure right back and if you configure it as unlock then they can also unlock their own now let's enable the multi-factor authentication for Chris account. If you're quite new to the multi-factor authentication, how to set, that, uh, set it up, please do check out other two lectures which are configured within this uh, series of Azure Active Directory multi-factor authentication or simply visit, uh, simply you can also visit the specific URL and uh, take the user account and simply enable so that it's gonna actually enable the multi-factor authentication for the required account so multi-factor authentication is successful if you want to know or uh, reinforce you can manage the user settings by deleting if you want to delete the users whatever they gave the input as their email ID or mobile app configuration or maybe mobile number all that or you can also require one more time let's see if it is not working for them or they have changed their mobile number all that in that case we can say the required selected users to provide the contact methods once again so that it's gonna save so these are three options which we have discussed within the uh, multi-factor authentication lecture so once we have enable uh, here the multi-factor authentication I can simply log in with the Chris account and see what I can do here so I'll just open up new window and I'll just input the Chris account details to log in and then this time it will be prompted for Chris to provide his, his multi-factor authentication details like email ID or the phone number or whatever the configuration we have done in our Azure portal so let's click on next and this is where I need to configure my mobile number maybe let's say I can go for the mobile number receive a notification or verification code and simply I'll just open up authenticator app in my phone and simply click on add account and I'll choose work or school account and I will scan here the specific code whatever it is showing and simply once it is activated click on next so it's going to validate for the verification it's going to one more time pop up on your screen to approve that specific code so I'm just waiting for a minute or so so click on next so make sure you can reach with the mobile app device so I got a prompt on my phone so I'll simply click on approve so it's gonna verify that verification code which I pressed as approved now verification is completed it's gonna ask me for additional information like your country source country so I'm just giving my country and then the phone number will be used in case uh, if I forgot my password right so I'm gonna enter here my password I'm gonna blur this and uh, I'm also getting the less security password which is the app password we call it so this password can be used for the legacy application like Outlook on a pop or 
IMAP configuration on maybe older version of your outlooks can be configured with this specific password so I'll just click on done I don't want you to know, configure anything on that specific so once it is done the user now able to log in but this time it doesn't ask for any kind of verification code because we have already provided so let's sign in one sign out and sign in one more time and see what happens um, just enter the user ID and password just for the verification whether everything smooth or not and it should pop up a verification code on my phone yes I'm gonna approve that so it might take a minute to log in yeah it's working fine so now it's time for us to demonstrate the password reset so I'll just log out or close this window by sign out and I'll visit the any of these two web pages let's say assume that I forgot the password so I can revisit to any of these pages like as an end user we will ask them to visit um, aqua.ms sspr setup or maybe password reset dot microsoft online dot com so I'll simply close and reopen in a new window this time but I'm just going to the password reset information and here it's gonna ask me what's the account you want to uh, configure or you want to you know retrieve the password so I'll just give the password and this is just for the verification whether we are humans or not so sometimes we enter wrong hopefully this time it's correct so if you see here uh, I got an error that says that your password is you cannot reset your own password because a password is it isn't turned off for your account the reason being definitely this Chris account is not part of the account which we configure if you remember we just scoped for only development not for the entire lab so I need to part of this Chris account to be part of party hyphen lab SSP or enable users so I'll just go to my active directory and the groups I'll select uh, SSPR account SSPR group enable and then from the members I should be able to add the specific user account like add member so here I should be able to add Chris account and once I have added his account let's give at least five six minutes time uh, sometimes it takes some time to actually replicate in the meantime I will I would like to show you the troubleshooting document also in case if you get a common address so if you just go back to uh, go back to this link uh, or maybe if you just go to event from the password reset if you see here there is a configuration where you can go for the documentation for self-registration and security info and the documentation and also for the authentication app uh, specific configuration so these are the very useful documentation and also if you just you know google um, you would uh, visit this specific page most of the time for registering your verification method info to reset your own password and uh, in this you also have the common problems and the solutions and if you see here your account is not enabled for the password reset this is what the error we got it and you please contact this is just because uh, we didn't enable for this specific user account that's why we are getting this error that's what the um, information it tells about the common problems so let's go back to uh, portal again uh, by visiting to the specific URL and try to reset this time it should be successful uh, let's enter the user ID and pqkrtj5 and this time if you see here it's gonna ask me hey in order to protect your account we need you to enter your complete mobile phone number so I'm gonna enter here my complete mobile number again I'm gonna blur this number so once I enter this I'm gonna get a text code to my mobile number I got a test received so I'm just entering the text verification code once I've done it's gonna verify and then it's straightforward asking for entering the password the reason being if you see here only one authentication method was uh, configured if it all if you have the two authentication uh, methods uh, in the previous step also it was showing for the app based so 
that's a second authentication method it's going to prompt so i can choose here a new password and that password can be entered and it can be configured so let's enter the common password strong strong password so set up that's it that's how it's going to work i hope this is useful for you and thank you for watching this